we have to begin in the beginning. So the, for the both of you, do you remember what uh, got you into wanting to be in a band? What was the first kind of spark that made you want to be a musician? You know, Sean and I, <clears throat> Sean and I have known each other since we were little kids, right? And uh, all of our friends and our older brothers uh, all knew each other, all know each other still. And um, everybody, we just, I don't know, we just gravitated toward rock music at a really young age, like Guns N' Roses. Like, you know, we, we were like little kids wearing uh, denim jackets with Guns N' Roses patches and Metallica patches and stuff like that. And, it's not appropriate music for kids, but <laughs> our parents allowed it. It was crazy. But I remember seeing Guns N' Roses live at the Ritz. They did a concert on MTV. Sure. I said, I want to do that. <laughs> I want to be those guys. Yeah. And it seemed very impossible. But now we kind of are. So, I, yeah, I don't remember a time where, really, where I didn't want to right. do that. Yeah. But uh, like you say, it, it seems so impossible. It seems so far away. So how do you go from there to do, well, let's, let's just buy a guitar and see how far we can get? Yeah, well, I feel like Mark was playing drums since he was born. I, I, I got my first drum when I, th I think when I was eight, I, seven or eight. My aunt had a drum, okay. a snare drum in her basement, and I just took it home. I mean, what, when was the first time I went over to your house? Was it like third grade or something? Something like that. The first, so third grade, we decided to start a band called the m ms mm. It was for Mark, our friend Neil, we had a friend Muhammad, and the little S was Sean. We were the M&Ms, and I would just bash on a keyboard that I'd bring down to his basement, and we couldn't have been more than eight years old, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we were playing in bands like that, and uh, that's how you get started, just having fun. It was playing. You know, that was like we weren't playing G.I. Joes, we were playing Rockstar. <laughs> was there a moment then where it became more serious, where, where it wasn't just a, a faraway dream, but you thought, well, no, I'm actually going to try and be a musician? I, I always wanted, okay. like, it was never, like, it was, this is what I have to do. There was no other. There was no other okay. plan. But, but when, when I joined Taking Back Sunday, that was when I really know, knew, like, there was people in this band that felt the same way sure. as I did. They're, they we're going to do this. Like, we're going to tour, no matter how small, we're going to get it out there. And uh, that, so that was when it really started to become, even before we had any, fans or anybody that cared uh, that everybody's on the same page. Well, it was interesting. Mark and I were in a band that we were taking seriously in high school that some of our friends weren't taking nearly as seriously. Like, we were sitting in our rooms practicing the songs, and you see, like, well, half the guys kind of don't really want to be there. Someone taking back Sunday started, like Mark was saying, all, all five of us wanted to do the same thing. So mm -hmm. it was very easy for the five of us to get in a van and sleep on strangers' floors and make no money, lose tons of money that you don't have anyway, and, and to go through that experience because we all wanted it very badly. And th that's a very interesting point because I suppose um, that, that isn't always clear to most people who yeah. look at musicians, that yeah. it, it, it does require a certain sacrifice and, and hard work. Mm. Um, and especially considering kind of the, the, the first couple of years of Take Back Sunday then, um, how did you experience those? Because Sean, you left yeah, after yeah. the first album. So, so mm -hmm. what, what was that initial period of the band like? Well, it was really crazy because we were doing those self-booked tours mm. and playing shows to like three or four people, literally like the bartender and the other band that was on tour. So we, we had that experience. Then we went home, we got signed to Victory Records on the strength of our demo. And then things took off, we were shot out of a cannon from there. So for me, that was really overwhelming to deal with. I was a kid in my room playing bass guitar and suddenly you're playing to thousands of people. Like the first time I remember we were in Toronto, Canada. They had to keep moving up the venue to make more room for capacity. And we sold out like 2,500 tickets. We'd never been there before. So being in that world when this is like 2003 was too much for me. It was like, like suddenly you've been on tour for two years of your life. I'm like, I was only 20 years old when the band started. What's going on? So it was a very scary thing. So it just, I was very anxious about it and everything was changing and we lost control over it kind of. And, uh, and that was great for the success of the band. But for me personally, I had to take some time away and, and kind of regroup. And then all those years later, I was like, geez, you know, like I need these guys. If I want to be a successful musician, if I want to create the best music I can, it has to be with these guys. And the mm -hmm. five of us have something that's very, um, it's very hard to come by. That yeah. kind of chemistry is very rare. Well, because I was going to say, 
even though uh, and, and John left as, as well but mm -hmm. um, creatively I believe that I think that album did work for you guys it, it was uh, so, so how did you experience it creatively sonically in terms of the music yeah I mean it, like it was one of those things you start writing songs and when I joined the band it was when Adam and John started writing mm. the, the lyrics and melodies and when that starts coming together it was some of the most amazing songs I'd ever been a part of writing I remember uh, with the song Great Romance of the 20th mm. Century, there's a part she says, come on, come on. We could hear it in the practice space for the first time. We got like the big room with the big PA and stuff. We were really trying to hear everything. And they, they started hitting on this. I was like, wow, that's so catchy. And that it gave me goosebumps the first mm. time I heard it. So anytime we play that song live, like I'm kind of brought back to that moment. So it was a very enjoyable creative process where it felt like everyone was contributing and making it greater than the sum of its parts. Right. Especially the demo. Yeah, like when when we finally when we recorded it, which wasn't long after, you know, uh, Adam and John started singing. Yeah, it was that song that 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 same part to where I was like, oh my god, this is this is real. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I remember like showing it to friends and family and getting excited, and like I didn't feel like anyone was getting as excited as we were about <laughs> it. And I'm like, come on, this is amazing, guys! Come on! I definitely had a few people say, yeah, it's good, but it's not going to be popular. And I'm like, all right, well, yeah, it's not as good as this band that no one's ever heard well, of. Yeah. Because that's why I asked, uh -huh. kind of, when you when you start th taking things seriously, because usually the the outside world doesn't see kind of what you can see or right. what you can feel. So. And, and rap rap rock was there was the mm. thing at that time. Mm. It was, that was huge. I was everything. Every, everybody had to be, everybody was rap rock out of nowhere. Right. So what we were doing was not that. Yeah. So people can see what we could see, right. Sure. Um, but then Mark, for you, when uh, Sean leaves the band and then John leaves the band, what, what, what was that like for you, kind of, because you, you stayed and then both creatively, but also losing uh, somebody you've been playing music with since, since you were eight, like you say. It was not easy on me. So I think I was kind of in denial about mm. it a little bit. I kind of wanted the two new guys to be John and Sean, so I tried to treat them the same way, and it was just very, very different. And um, it, was, it was, you know, it was, it was difficult. It was difficult to deal with those personalities that mm. they were so different from John and Sean or what I wanted them to be. Mm. Uh, so that, that, that was a thing. I mean. and, and creatively, the, those, those kind of subsequent, uh, up until 2010, I suppose, mm -hmm. uh, creatively, how, how do you look back at, at those albums that you that were? I, you know, I mean, there's good songs on, mm -hmm. on Where You Want to Be and, and uh, Louder Now. There's some great songs that I'm really proud to be a part of. And, uh, you know, being in a band, to me, it, it just, it has to be organic. Mm. You know, so if you're writing good songs with people, uh, but you're not having as much fun as you were. So I was kind of like, you know, our success was, we were doing great. Right. But um, it still just wasn't the same. I always thought, there's no way that they're not going to come back. Okay. So, Sean, for you then, what was there a thought in your mind that thought, well, there's going to be a point where I, I might come back? Oh, from the, like, the second I left, I didn't okay. think I'd ever okay. come back. There was no, I, I just needed to take a step back, and it was one of those things where if the other band I was doing, it, I mean, we didn't have a, an idea of starting it before John and I had left. Um, mm. It was just, all right, I got to live my dream for a moment, and now I'm going to move on to the next thing because maybe it wasn't right for me or something like that. And then uh, John and I started this band, Stray Light Run. We did that for seven years, and that kind of fizzled out. And again, I had the same kind of, kind of idea. All right, I got to live my dream for a little bit longer, and now it's done. And that's all right. You know, I, at least like, I'll have all those great memories. And then Mark called, and he's like, hey, I want my band back. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, every time I think I'm out, they pull me back in. And he did, and I couldn't be happier for it. I'm more grateful because um, I think we're having the best years as a band right now. The most... Uh, the most functional as a unit, personally mm. and creatively. So I think we're, we're hitting on all those things that um, we had to go away from each other for a little bit to come back together even stronger. Did, you, did the two of you keep in touch in those years? Sure. Yeah. 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 Same, same group of friends and stuff. Okay. Our moms are friends. Okay, you know, so, so that's, yeah. 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 
It got strange. It was time. weird for a little bit. Because, well, I can imagine from your perspective, Sean, that mm -hmm. you leave the band, uh, and then, uh, like you say, commercially, it was a really good period sure. after that. So, so was, there, was there a thought of, well, maybe I should have stayed, or, or were you happy with the No, be, because it was all... Uh, it was all a very selfish thing for me to step away. Right. I thought the band with, with just the, the three of, of Adam and Mark and Eddie could be successful on its own. I mean, regardless of who the other members were, because there was so much talent and so much drive there. So it, that wasn't a real concern. I thought the band was going to continue to be successful with ja uh, John and I. With us in it, it was a very combustible, volatile thing at that time. So I was like, I, I had no regrets about leaving, and I wished them, you know, well, and then and, and I, I and didn't really care where I wound up, you know, if I if I wound up broke and on the side of the road or something, I wouldn't be like, oh, I wish I could be there. It's like, no, I had to step away from me so I could be mentally healthy and 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 there, and uh, and that's where it all worked out too, coming back together, like you see, like the band had the success and there was lots of struggles within the success and stuff. And now coming back, I have that, that clarity too, where I handled the things I needed to in my own brain and in my own life to, um, to enjoy the success we're having now. Because that's an interesting thought, because uh, you mentioned the word combustible, that at that time it was it's more combustible. So, so is it as simple uh, as that, kind of going through life, getting older, and then that's why it works now? It, oh yeah, maturity calms everything down, I think, <laughs> a little bit. We're still immature babies at times. Like, <laughs> But, um, but compared, yeah, yeah, to where we were, we're like wise old grandfathers. And then that moment, Mark, because uh, the, you mentioned that kind of you, you called "I want my band back." So, so that last year, let's say, <clears throat> of, of kind of uh, the old lineup before before the guys came back. Well, what we was, had an, a, a, yeah, new, <laughs> a new a new new old line, line. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it just wasn't it just wasn't there. No mm. one. It was even so much like the personality thing was even a whole nother dimension right. of bad. So it just got to the point to where I was done. Okay. Unless this happened. You know, I said that. Like, I, I told Eddie that, I told Adam that, and I told our manager Jillian that. Um, I don't know if I would have actually left <laughs> if they didn't agree to it, but I was like, there's just no point of doing this because we, there's no future. It's not fun. It's, I, I hate it. But so, it. Yeah, I suppose everybody could feel that, that it wasn't right the, yeah. at that time. So I got a blessing from Eddie and Adam to call up Sean and John and okay. say, hey, this is an idea. And then, then uh, well, what was it creatively like then? Because then it's all of a sudden you're all... Uh, at least 10 years older than, than kind of the last time you did that. Uh, what, what, what was that like? Was it a lot of memories or did you kind of look towards the future and think, well, what can we do now? Yeah, it was that. Okay. And I mean, but we didn't, the, the way that we write music now and when we got back together is exactly the same right. as it was when we were young and, and wrote Tell All Your Friends. And, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to add that that, that chemistry was still there like immediately. We flew out to this small town, El Paso, Texas, in the States, and first, like, we, we hashed out all the, the bullshit we'd been through in the last, like, few years, and that took, like, an hour, and we were pretty drunk by that time. Then we started writing songs immediately, and that chemistry was still there, and that was the real goal. If the chemistry wasn't there, I don't think we would have pushed to do it. I don't think we could have done it. I think, um, creatively, if it wasn't heading in a direction we were all happy with, it wouldn't have been good or successful, so I think we would have all just bad as that, alright guys, this isn't working. But it was all there personally and creatively, like I've talked about before, like it was there. So we're like, I think this is going to be good. It took a little longer <laughs> than we wanted to, to get to where we wanted to be, but here we are. But especially as a uh, rhythm section and being back on stage with each other and kind of looking across the stage, what was it like to, to now see that recognizable face again and, and kind of have that connection again? It was fun. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. It, it felt felt like, you know, we're back together and this is where we're supposed to be. Mm. And then, um, well, the, the, the three albums, that took, uh, Taking Back Sunday, yeah. the album was mm -hmm. kind of the first one that uh, yeah. came out then. Um, what was the mission, is, a, is not the right word, but what was, what's the, the aim, so to say, with not just with that album, but looking towards the future and then... Uh, was it to, to try uh, to challenge yourself a little bit more musically? Sure, I think it was to show where we had all grown creatively 
and to make a statement that we're not making Tell All Your Friends part two. Right. We don't want to continue on that line. Like, although that might have made us a little bit of money for a couple of years, creatively that wouldn't have been fulfilling to us, and I, I think people would have seen through it. There was definitely a push from certain people to do that, and we had no desire to do that. And that was also a part of what made it exciting for the five of us to be back together again. We knew that that would be the quote unquote safe bet. None mm. of us felt that that was a good idea or what we wanted to do. So we went in a direction that we thought, we thought was cool and fun at the time and, and pushed our creative limits, I think. And I think we succeeded in that. Because is there always a worry when you kind of reunite that, well, are people waiting for this? Or do, sure. do they want this? It seemed like they wanted it on the internet, but then that didn't turn into the staggering ticket sales we had hoped for. So it, it, took it, work. it took us a long time. Like in, in the U.S., we're, we're like we're way bigger in the U.S. Sure. than we are over here, you know. So, but it took time uh, when they first got back in to get it to where it is now. Mm. And. Well, with that success, because uh, obviously, uh, like I said, in, in that period, uh, Sean, where you were then, mm -hmm. the, those those were the the most commercially successful sure. albums. But you mentioned the the, the joy of, of playing together and the joy that kind of you need to be in a band. So I can can I assume that that joy uh, kind of started to outweigh uh, some of the other some of the other successes that, that you can have as a Without band. a doubt. Like, without, like when, when it wasn't working out quite as, as well as we wanted to at first, it didn't matter to me. Sure. That, you know, it, I wasn't thinking, oh, maybe we should get Fred and Matt back in the band. Like, that was never a thought. Like, it was just, let's ride this out, see how long we can do it for. If we can keep on going, good. If we can't, well, it was meant to be that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can we make another record? Okay, we can, let's do it. Let's keep working. Let's tour more internationally. Let's figure it out. Let's grow this thing everywhere. There's and a five-year plan. We have a five-year plan. <laughs> From right, right this second, right now, could we be a band in five years? I think we can. Yeah. So then we always got to check that <laughs> annually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But can I assume if, if, if all uh, works out well, you, you want to do this uh, until you, you drop, basically? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I can do anything <laughs> else. Like, yeah. I, I can only play bass in Taking Back Sunday. <laughs> like, I'm relegated to this world, and I'm happy for it. And I, I mean, I don't want to do anything else. Because of the, what you mentioned earlier, I, I think is very interesting. Where, where on several occasions you thought, okay, this is my, this has been my yeah. time as a musician, yeah. and yeah. Then, so so we're, how how close were you? How ready were you to give all this up? I, I was ready when okay. when the old band Straight Light Run had ended. I called my father. He had a a friend that worked on the railroad back in the states, and I said, mm. Dad, call up Uncle Kenny, get me in there. I'll clean the okay. toilets. I'll do anything I have to do. I I met my girlfriend, who's now my wife. I knew I wanted to marry her. I know I wanted to start a life and start a family with her. So I needed security. And uh, that, that was going to be my way to, to provide that and figure, mm -hmm. figure that out. I mean, and then what we've seen, there's no security kind of anywhere, especially right. the economy in the States. Like, things hit the wall for everyone. And uh, so I don't know if that would have been the safer bet. I think taking back Sunday is the safe bet and kind of always mm -hmm. has been. And then now, uh, obviously, after all these years, uh, you've been uh, releasing albums, um, playing shows all over. What what is the five year plan, so to say? Because you, you mentioned five years, we're trying to be a band. Uh, you have just released now that the uh -huh. the twenty, the kind of the look back album. Have you already written for for what comes next? Actually, John was playing a song that he has for all of us yesterday in okay. the bus, and it was really good. We were all pretty pretty excited about it. Yeah, so. he's like he's like it's like almost half a song, maybe a little more. I'm like, well, email that idea around. Like, let's get to work. You know, Mark will have ideas. Adam will have ideas. I'll have some ideas, and like, let's let's start the process because this is a long year of touring. Usually, when we get tired of touring, that's when we get creatively excited again. Like, okay, now now we're ready to write. We're ready to get in the studio and hunker down for a bit and get some songs going. So I think starting in the new year, we'll get to work on that for sure. Because for the both of you, are there still areas of music that, that you, are, you want to explore with the band? You know, we've never thought about that okay. before going in. That, right. I think that's one of, the, the, one of the good things about us and, and why we've had longevity is that we've never, there was never a plan going into an album. It was just, what do you have? How are we going to do it? What's going to make it sound the best? Instead of, hey, let's write this song so it could be big. Mm. So, but, and I think that's helped us. 
But yeah, it's interesting too. Like you see, John does his solo stuff that might be a little more like Americana, a little more folky and stuff. Mark does a hip hop project on the side that he's been working on for years, creating beats and stuff in that world. So I think bringing all those elements, they come into Taking Back Sunday, all those influences. So it makes Taking Back Sunday something extra special. So it's kind of, it kind of finds uh, all your uh, individual influences kind of find their way. Yeah, in yeah, the music yeah, and yeah. yeah. And, uh, and it still sounds like Taking Back Sunday because it is the four of us in the room, the same guys that. Rotel your friends and created the sound of the band. It carries on, just hopefully more mature. And then, then the final thought then uh, with that, it's, it's the enjoyment you get because there's it's almost inevitable to, to uh, not to look back with with an album uh, like Twenty. So mm -hmm. uh, it's the feeling you get now, and then I suppose since. Uh, 2010, 2011, mm -hmm. the same as, as when you kind of started out as young, as, as being 20 years old, the same group yeah. of people. And yeah, especially like when we're playing a show and, you know, like we, we did a tour of Coheed and Cambria in the mm -hmm. States and there was 8,000, 10,000 people coming out to shows and um, the reactions were insane. So mm -hmm. all of us would be looking at each other going like, man, I, I, can't, I can't believe that this is still happening and people are... So yeah, the, the, the feeling is definitely the same from me. Yeah, and I mean, even even seen those reactions to the newer songs we released, put out this record title, and we were playing a lot of those songs on that side, I'm like, okay, we're still, we're still on to something here. Like, we haven't lost it. So that chemistry is still there. And I mean, we feel it. Like, when John was singing a song to us yesterday, like, oh, that's going to be great. Like, I can already hear where it's going to be as a Taking Back Sunday song. Like, his words and melodies and the guitar part, it was all, like, there. And I can... I always get surprised by what Adam and John add to things or what Mark adds to things, like, and that, because it's not something I would have thought of on my own at all. And mm -hmm. I think we all kind of feel that. Everyone brings their own element to this band, and that's what makes it special. Final question then. Um, Eddie was a kind of, uh, for personal reasons, had to, had to leave yeah. the band. Is it, the way I see it, but I might be wrong, is it, is, is it will he come back at some point? That is uh, really up to him. I, if, if he, that is something he really wanted to do, and he, he showed us that his heart was truly in it. I think that's something that the four of us would be open to. If, um, if he, yeah, if he wanted to be here, he would be here. Right. Without, without question. Yeah, right. we didn't want to do this 20 tour without him, but it's the way I think he wants it. So here we are. Because does that make you think uh, about the next record, him potentially not being there? Well, so the kind of <laughs> how, how are we going to do that creatively? To be completely honest, he, he, he's been having his, his personal issues for a while. So okay. uh, with the last album and, and the album before, it, it wasn't really, he wasn't, wasn't the same. He wasn't really there. Okay. So, no. <laughs> uh, but well, well, hopefully we'll see a positive resolution. Then. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just, I want him to be happy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Yeah, 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 without a doubt. I definitely want him. Nothing but love yeah. for Eddie. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. That was a good interview. Yeah.